welcome to another episode of Jim's Lumber Garden. Okay then, so continuing on with the um, with the seeds, what I did earlier earlier on this year was obviously save the um, I let the kale seeds run to run to seeds, and obviously all you need to do is just leave them in the ground, um, and then the flowers obviously turn to these seed pods, and then all I did is took the took these um, sort of branches off, brought them inside, left them in the greenhouse to dry right out, and I did that about two months ago, and then basically what I did is took the seed pods off. And then obviously what you can do is split. So what I find is if you take it from the, the, the sort of the stem end, if you like, and then just pull that open, you'll see that inside you've got multiple sort of little little sort of spherical seeds. And if you do enough of them, you sort of end up with um, sort of plenty of seeds like this. Now, you don't need many of these to get the seeds you need. I mean, obviously I plant around um, around sort of a dozen or two of these a year. So you know, just a few of these seed pods will most certainly give you enough seeds. But the one thing you can say about brassicas is you can keep these seeds for a number of years. You know, you don't need to do this every year. Um, brassica seeds do keep for sort of three, three to four years. And you can tell if you're not sure about how long seeds will last. If you look at the seed packets, you'll see on there. You know, the year of purchase and the year you know when you can use them till. Uh, but you find with most brassica seeds that they'll last for um, sort of four three to four years. So these will do me for three or four years. So I won't need to do this again. I'll just keep these seeds. As long as you keep the seeds nice and dry um, in the house and then obviously get you know sort of get plenty of seed. Then all of these will um, put these in an envelope you know like I've done with the others and then um, <coughs> all I need to do then is keep them in a dark dry place um, and then obviously when I need them I'll just bring them out and then sort of sprinkle them on as exactly the same as you would do from seeds bought from the shop and then you can um, you know, sort of grow the seeds. Now the one thing that you do need to do um, is if you are saving the seeds what you don't want to do is let any other brassica run to seed that are near them otherwise you're potentially going to get cross pollination. So as soon as they start to go into flower you need to make sure you've got no other brassicas anywhere near and that's obviously not on your own plot but also any, any other plots as well. Um, the only other thing you can do if other people have got other brassicas is um, basically dig the plant up as best you can with leaving as much soil on it and then put the, the whole plant in an area, another area of the garden or wherever where there's you know minimal cross pollination can occur, either put it inside, you know, so we, which I guess is the extreme case, or just put it to another sort of end of the garden and then um, then you can uh, you know make sure that the seeds that you get are, are, are sort of sort of genuinely kale seeds as opposed to something else. So all I do, obviously this, this is a little bit time consuming to be fair, so what I tend to do is sort of dry them out and then I sort of do them a bit at the time because it can be a little bit tedious, but obviously you don't need to do too many. Um, I'm doing loads here to make sure I've got plenty of seeds and I'll also give some of these seeds away to other people as well, uh, which is always nice. But, um, you know, really if you're going to grow sort of a dozen or so of these plants, because they are quite big plants, um, you know, you only need to save yourself about 50 seeds. I've probably already got about 500 seeds there already. So anyway, I'll, I'll continue then, but that's basically how you um, save brassica seeds. All brassicas are the same, um, sort of pretty much, you know, they'll all run to seed and then, uh, you, you know, have flowers and then run to seed, then you'll get pods like this. And all you need to do is exactly the same as me, go from the, go from the, um, the stem end and pull, the, pull them apart exactly like you would with beans and then just basically get the little seeds out. As I say, keep them dry. Make sure there's no mould or anything like that, because that's what'll that's what'll damage the seed. Um, 
and then as long as the nice nice spherical dark seeds like that you know they're healthy and they'll um, they'll uh, you know as I say they'll keep for sort of three or four years um, and so, sort of keep you going and keep you stocked up with um, kale seeds. Okay, so one other seed that we can be doing now are the uh, the French bean seeds. Now, all beans pretty much are the same. Obviously, runner beans or broad beans, or anything you know, you can keep the beans. So that's that's basically what we're after. Those are the beans. So all you need to do is um, save the save the seed, um, or, or in fact the bean off the off the plant like that. Wait till it's gone dry, and you'll be able to, you know, as soon as you hear it, sort of, you know, it's nice and crisp and dry, and you can hear the beans rattling inside. What you need to do is obviously there's a seam up, up the back, both sides of the um, bean. Just put your finger in there, and as you see, as you, as you pull it open, like that, you'll see the beans inside um, there. So just pull the two apart, like that, and then in each one you'll probably get about six, seven, eight beans. And then, you know, I I typically grow about a hundred of these plants a year, um, which is possibly more than I need. But what I always like to do is to um, grow plenty of plants so I'm always guaranteed of loads of seeds. So as you can see there are the there are the beans inside the pod. All you need to do is go to the end with your thumb like that and then split the two split the two ends and you'll find all the beans will come out. And so you can very quickly fill um, you know a tub full of beans like that. Um, now with beans I would recommend that you only take enough for one year. These aren't these won't sort of keep for a number of years. So you, you could potentially get two years out of them if they're properly dried and you store them away. But I would recommend that you that you save seed every year. Now these these actual seeds come from French and I started to grow these around four or five years ago, um, and I've only ever bought one lot of seed because every year I just save the seed like this, and then I grow them on for next year. So with beans, really you only need to buy the seed once. And then, as long as you save your seed at the end of the year like this, um, you know you can. You know it saves you spending money buying more seeds because uh, you can just save your own seed. And then, but again, in exactly the same way as I explained with the brassicas, what you do want to do is if you are going to save the seed like this, what you don't want to do is um, grow multiple types of beans close to um, to each other because what you can get is cross pollination and then you'll get some kind of hybrid variety between the the beans that you've got there. I mean, that, that may be a, a good or a bad thing, you might want to experiment to see if you can come up with a new variety of bean. But basically I, I like to keep the varieties true if I can. Um, and so what I do is I only grow one type of bean and make sure, because I grow these beans and also runner beans, so I'll grow these at least 10 metres or so away from the runner beans. And then you know there's no or there's little chance of cross pollination as the insects go around the flowers. You know they won't sort of cross pollinate from the runner beans to these or vice versa. So anyway, you just need to go through and sort of collect these beans. Obviously, what all you need to do is make you know sort of collect the beans off as soon as they've you know sort of developed into the thicker. You know so you know that the beans are actually developed. Wait for them to dry. Um, this year we've had good weather, so I left these on the plant to dry. But but obviously, if you are having a wet wet year, what you want to do is bring them inside. Spread them out single layered um, on a on a piece of newspaper or something like that in inside a shed or a greenhouse to just to dry out, and then as soon as they start to rattle, and you can hear the beans sort of rattling around inside. So you know it should be. I don't know if you can hear that. You can hear the beans rattling around inside the pod. Then you know that they're going to come out. They're nice and dry. As soon as you've got them all out like this, what you need to do is then put them in an envelope or a bag, uh, leave them in the house over the winter. Um, what you want to do is keep them dry. That's what you, you know, because any any sort of damp will, will sort of cause potential fungus or stuff like that to grow, which is your which is your worst enemy. And then bring these out next year. And what I suggest you do is put um, one of these in each of your pots, and then you grow away. You do find when you when you're saving beans, you do get pretty much a hundred percent germination rate. Um, I find with things like brassicas, obviously you grow them in a in a tray, so you want to put multiple seeds in there. So I don't know what percentage rate you're going to get. You might get sort of, I don't know, 80 or 90. But with beans, you're pretty much guaranteed to get every one of these beans growing into a plant. Uh, what you can do is obviously put two or three beans in a pot if you really want to, but you can find that they get a bit overcrowded if you do that. 
So I'll just continue with these, um, and then as soon as I've got all these, as I say, I'll put these in a bag, take them down to the house, obviously mark them up, so you know what they are, if you've got multiple types of beans. And then uh, these, will, these will come out next spring, around sort of March, late March, early April time, to, um, to be put in some compost and um, grown into plants for next year. Okay, so saving sunflower seeds. Basically, these are the these are the sunflower heads, and as you can see, the seeds are all starting to sort of loosen up. And if I sort of run my finger around there, you can see that the seeds are actually starting to come out. Now, with with sunflowers, um, most certainly the um, your, your 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 biggest enemy is fungus, because what you can find, if I just turn this over, you'll see, you can see that there's fungus starting to grow there. Now, what you want to do, if you can, is dry them so you've not got any fungus on. Um, and what I've done here is I've dried various um, flowers, but you can see all of them have pretty much got fungus on. Um, now what I, what I tend to do is save the biggest flower, and then just, just, just by rubbing it like that, you'll see that the, that the seeds come out. And obviously, if you, if you save one this size, then obviously the, you know, you're gonna get hundreds, if not thousands of seeds from each one. I would say the germination rate for these, um, is probably 50% um, if you save your own seeds. So what you want to do is save plenty of them, and then just sort of as soon as the as soon as they start to release, you want to get them out. And then what I suggest you do is um, put them out onto a tray um, in the house, and you want to dry them out. Uh, you know, as, as, as soon as you've got them out of here, um, you know, just to sort of do that. They do do tend to go all over the place. But those are the seeds that you get out. And what you want to do is on single layer um, in, a, in, in a box or something like that, either in the greenhouse or in the house is better probably this year, is so the seeds aren't touching each other if you can, if you can get it like that. Put them in the house and let them dry out properly because what, what you want to do is avoid any um, uh, moisture because the moisture is you know, you know, then going to um, turn into um, you know, sort of mould or whatever on, so that's the, that's the bit you want to avoid because that's what's going to damage the seed now. To tell if the seed's okay or not, what you want to do is, if I just get one, I'll show you. What you should be able to do is, if you get if you get a seed like that and it's been properly po um, pollinated, if you squeeze the seed, it should feel nice and firm, like there's a solid sort of kernel inside there. Now, um, those seeds most certainly feel like there's something inside. What you can get is the seeds feel flat, um, as though there's nothing inside them, and that's typically when the seeds haven't um, pollinated properly. So we'll see if they're like that, they're not going to grow again, so, you know, sort of, don't bother saving them. Now, obviously there's loads and loads of seeds here, um, so I'll, on, I'll only save probably about a hundred or so, um, you know, a couple of hundred or so seeds, because um, it's always nice to have some spares, but, because um, you can either give them away or, you know, glow, you know grow plants and give those away. Um, but what, what I would suggest you do is, um, if you can, if you've got multiple flowers, save some off each flower. So just in case there's a problem with one of them, you've always got something to fall back on. So I'll get most of the seeds out of this one like I'm showing you here. All I'm doing is just rubbing my thumb along the seeds like that and you'll find that they release like that. Try and get the biggest seeds, they're the ones that are most likely to grow and they're typically the ones on the outside, you know, you know the edge of the, the perimeter of the flower. I find the ones that, that, you know, the further to the centre you go, the smaller the seed gets, but the bigger ones they're the ones that are more likely to grow. Like that. So as soon as you do that, obviously you'll have more time than me to do this, so I'll just show you. What I will do is obviously save them seed, like that, get them sort of nice and dry. Um, and then I'll probably get another, another flower, um, like this one for example, and I'll take out the seeds from there as well and put those separately, or possibly this one, you know, in, you know, in exactly the same way. And just get another, just get another tray. Seconds. <clears throat> Get another tray, and then just you know, you know, in exactly the same way. Just you know, to start with, you perhaps need to be a little bit rougher, but just to, just to doing it, sort of rub it with your thumb like that, and then you'll find that the the seeds do release. The rest of these will go to the chickens, so I'll I'll, I'll feed the rest of these to my um, chickens, and all I basically do is make a hole through the centre and put a piece of string on and tie them to the side of the chicken run and then the chickens will do all the work for you, they'll, they'll pick out the seeds and eat them, um, it'll give them something to do. 
but as you say, you know, if you just go around like that, and if you can see what I'm doing, just rub them with your thumb, and you'll find that the, the seeds will release. Again, I'm focusing on the ones on the edge because they're the biggest seed. And then you can very quickly work your way around the flower like that. And then release the seed. And as you can see, you know, you end up with a, a good quantity of seed there. Now, these are both the same variety, these two flowers I've just done. I, I do have a smaller multi headed variety. Um, and again, with the beans, um, if you want sunflowers to stay true to their variety, what you want to do is keep the sunflowers apart. So, what I tend to do is grow these large ones in the allotment. Um, these are the ones that end up being about eight foot tall um, with large sunflowers on. I grow these up the allotments, and then the smaller, multi headed ones, I grow those in the border of my garden. Um, so, the, you know, so the, there are a few hundred. Um, a few hundred foot apart, so you know there's not, not much chance of cross pollinating. And then, as you can see, you can very quickly go around like that and get the get the seeds out like that. Now, obviously, you can eat sunflowers. Um, uh, sorry, sunflower seed. Um, I, to be honest with you, I would recommend if you want to eat sunflower seeds that you you buy them. I wouldn't recommend that you eat these because you can get quite a lot of bacteria. Um, in flowers that you grow yourself. So uh, what I would suggest, if you do want to uh, eat some flowers, I would suggest that you, you you buy them from a shop where they've been sort of treated. So I'm just going to bob those seeds in here, and as you can see very quickly, you know you can you can get together quite a few sort of seeds there. You know, there's a couple of at least probably about a thousand or so seeds there. As I say, what I'll do with both of these now, so I've picked a, a black seeded one and I've also picked a light seeded one, as you can see the difference in, in, in sort of look. What I'll do is I'll put these on a baking tray, an old baking tray in the house, um, just keep them in a sort of well ventilated um, place, let them dry out, because they can get, when they're like this, they can be a little bit sticky, there's a bit of sort of sap still on there. Wait till they're completely dried out, and then as soon as they're absolutely perfectly dry, then put them in a in a, in a paper bag or a large envelope, um, and then you know they'll be they'll be good for growing um, your sunflowers next year. Okay, so I'll just give you a quick plot update. So this is the um, the larger greenhouse. As you can see, we're still getting tomatoes. The plants are looking a bit sorry for themselves now. Um, I have started to reduce the water, so I'm only watering them every other day now. But as you can see, we've still got plenty of tomatoes coming. And so the, these are the um, these are the money maker tomatoes. You can see there's still plenty um, coming to this, this, the summer over here. So I'll be picking those in the next couple of days. Um, but they're still ripening. What I am doing is leaving plenty of ripe tomatoes in here at the moment. Then what that'll do is that'll encourage the others to um, to fruit. The um, the grapevine's pretty much done now, as you can see. I've picked all the grapes off it. There is still the odd one um, grape here, but we've had um, we've had about three kilos of grapes off it this year. So uh, the grapevine's done really well, and uh, that's the first greenhouse. There's not much more to show. Uh, these are some Don Pedro planter uh, plants there, but uh, that's pretty much what, what's going on in here. Right. So sort of outside the. Um, the herb garden has started to sort of die back a little bit now. So what I will do is cut these hard back, um, sort of cut all this sort of dead wood off to expose the, the new shoots at the bottom. So this is the rosemary. Um, obviously mint, I'll take that down right the way down to the ground so that will shoot up from next year. Um, this is the um, celery, as you can see. The celery's done really well. I've not shown you this for a couple of months. But the, um, the celery plants aren't doing too bad at all, as you can see. Um, you know, they are smaller than ones you get in the shop. But um, you know that it's nice looking celery and it is really tasty. Um, these ones are a little bit smaller. They tend to have grown a bit bigger this side, but that's the celery. So I'll be harvesting that over the next um, few months. Uh, right, okay, so over here we've got, I can only apologise for the wind. Here we've got the um, asparagus. As you can see that's starting to go yellow now. Now what I need to do, because the wind's picking up, is I need to cut all this down to the ground now because you can damage the um, the roots if you're not careful. So what I'm going to be doing is chopping this down to about an inch or so above the ground and then I'll shred all this up to put back onto the garden. So that's the um, asparagus. The raspberries are um, still fruiting. We're still getting some raspberries on. As you can see there's some yellow ones here. Um, and then we've got some red ones over there. As you can see, so the raspberries are still coming. The um, Most of the potatoes are now dug up. 
Um, as you can see, I've dug, I've dug all these, which is basically what I've been doing for the past uh, month or so. I've been sort of coming up and digging um, a row or so up, a, a row or so um, up when I've been when I've been coming up. So I've got a, a full row here, and I've got some sort of end bits there, as you can see where the chickweed is. Um, so this will be sort of rotivated all over now, and then um, there's, there's there's some muck and stuff to go on. So I'll be uh, putting all that in. All of the um, sweet peas have been now taken out and um, gotten rid of. The brassicas, if I'm being brutally honest with you, the brassicas have not done well this year at all. Um, we've got some, we've got some um, turnips and swedes down here, which haven't done too badly. But this is the this is the kale. As you can see, the kale's not done well at all, and the uh, those are the um, those are the um, uh, the cauliflowers. As you can see, not doing well. It, it's not been a good year for brassicas at all this year, to be honest with you. And then this is the second lot of um, calabrese. You know, there's a few heads on there, but, but largely speaking, it's it's um, really a bad crop this year um, for brassicas. So we've done well with the seeds off them, but uh, the actual um, the actual plants themselves haven't done well. Here we've got the um, the parsnips, which will obviously start to crop in in uh, sort of a couple of months or so, sort of in December. Um, and then here we've got the remainder of the sunflowers, and uh, those are the um, kale plants that I took the seed from. This spinach here, I've had quite a lot run to seed, uh, but what I've been doing is taking the seed heads off, um, the seed shoots off, and then sort of eating. But we have done well for spinach this year, to be honest. Um, right, just round here. I can only apologise for the wind. Um, in here we've got the spinach, as you can see a lot of this has run to seed in the last couple of weeks. Um, I did cut all the tops off a couple of weeks ago, but as you can see it's all gone again. And then the beetroot here, we've had a really good year for beetroot. But um, the spinach largely, this is spinach beet and it's largely run to seed this year. So um, a lot more than it has done normally. And that's not been because of water and that's been because of the heat. It's been too hot for us. But anyway, that's the... Um, second tunnel. Uh, in here we've got the, obviously the rhubarb's now gone over. Um, the, the beans that were here have been taken out, all the canes have been put back down um, in the shed to overwinter. Um, the um, clangers are still flowering so I've kind of left these in but what I do need to do is collect some of the seeds and these are the seed heads here. So basically you just, for clangers you just wait till they dry like that and then just break that up in your hand and you can see they're actually the seeds. Um, so they'll they'll grow again next year. So I'll I'll save some of those. You can see the seed pods here. So you just break them up, and the the, the light little um, sort of curly, um, sort of worm-looking things. To be honest with you, but I'll save some of the seeds from there. Then dig all this over. Right, this is where the um, um, this is the coloco. That's um, um, still growing. So obviously I'll I'll dig the roots up from that. Um, obviously this is the one that's in the nasturtium family, as you can tell from the from the leaves. But you eat the roots of those. Um, so I'll dig that up in a couple of um, weeks' time. This is where all the pumpkins are. Obviously the pumpkins have been taken up now, so all this needs to be um, dug over. Um, there's still um, quite a few weeds coming through, believe it or not, this time of year. But uh, obviously this needs to be all dug out now and cleaned up. This is the, uh, the runner bean um, canes here. And as you can see, the, the, the runner beans are now running to seed, so I've left these to run to seed now. Um, in exactly the same way as the, um, the other beans, I'll be saving these for next year. But as you can see, the, the canes are starting to go over a little bit now. Um, but this is the next lot of seed to be collected, um, the runner beans, and I'll obviously take the canes down. Uh, and then we're back on the other side of the, the potatoes, also we've got these few plants here. And then there's a full row here, so I'll, I'll dig the rest of these out. The potatoes this year, to be honest with you, um, I would say I've had about, um, I've had less than half than what I normally have out of the ground. And that's basically been because the, the weather's been so hot uh, and dry, uh, the potatoes haven't fully grown. The potatoes that I'm getting out are nice, you know, there's a good number of potatoes, but they're all quite small. Um, but they are, they are really nice potatoes nevertheless, but there's no sort of jacket sized potatoes at all, you know, the largest one's probably about four inches across. But uh, I normally get around, um, I normally get around about 300 kilos of potatoes out of here, and this year I'll probably get about 150, possibly slightly more than that. Okay, on the fruit trees here, as you can see, the apples are most certainly ready to be picked now, so I'll, pick in, I'll be picking these apples later today. Um, the rest of them I need to sort of cut back and train these um, branches in. 
Um, but apart from that, those are the sort of fruit trees. Obviously, the, the spring onions, these are the ones that we didn't eat. So, uh, you know, they've gone over now, really. But um, that's, the, that's what the spring onions look like now. And then the, the second greenhouse here, um, this is where all the peppers are. There's a few weeds growing in here, but uh, the peppers have done really well this year. Uh, I've had loads of peppers, but a lot of these are going over now. Um, as you can see, these have gone too far. But the what I'm going to be harvesting um, later today are the, the jalapenos. I've left these on the plants so they get a, a nice lot of heat. Um, as you can see, there's plenty of peppers growing in here, along with the weeds. Um, so what I'll be doing is picking the majority of these jalapenos now. And what I suggest you do is, if you've grown as many as I have, obviously use them fresh if you can. Um, but if they've got to this stage where these just start to go a little bit soft, um, that's when you want to pick them and all I do is just put your thumb through the top like that and take them off like that and then what I'll be doing is chopping all of these up um, chop them up finely and then I'll put those into a bag and freeze them and then I can take them out bit by bit um, over the winter months to make chilies or curries or whatever you're doing but I'll be picking the majority of these today so that's what the peppers look like um, a lot of the sweet peppers we've picked out of here um, you know the larger sweet peppers we have had a really good crop um, so pretty much all of those have been picked now out of here um, but uh, you know they have done really well what has done well are the uh, the mohawk um, horned ones which are here there's actually one green one here that's what they kind of look like a bit, bit bigger than that but they go bright red but we've been picking loads of them recently oh there's one large one here so they go they're sort of that kind of size and they go dark red when they're ready to be picked and uh, we've been eating loads of those um, over the past few weeks, but that's what the second greenhouse looks like and then we're back to the beginning, so that's what the allotment looks like So I hope this episode was of some use to you, please don't hesitate to put any comments or questions you've got below and I'll always get back to you and I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Allotment Garden